Hi, my name is Johan Magnusson, and I have the exquisite pleasure of welcoming you to this course in Research Frontiers in the Digitalization of Society. The course will run throughout the summer, and I hope you will have a wonderful time at it. I, I am the head of the Division for Information Systems, i.e. the organizational entity responsible for this course, and the organizational home of the researchers that you will get to know throughout this course. Right? We are positioned at the Department of Applied IT in the University of Gothenburg, and we also work really closely with the Swedish Center for Digital Innovation. So this is the premier home of research on information systems and on the digitalization of society. This weird phenomena that sort of counteracts our ability to act in times of disruption. Right? Doesn't that sound neat? But I'll start with just giving you my personal perception about digitalization and why the digitalization of society becomes such a pressing and a difficult issue for us to address as individuals, organizations, and as society as a whole. Right? And I want to start there with a commensuration speech offered by David Foster Wallace back in 2006 uh, uh, from Kenyon College. And it starts out with the story of two fish swimming in the sea. You've probably heard this before, but they're young fish, right? They, 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 haven't, they don't have a bad bone in their body. They're super psyched. They're super happy, swimming, having the time of their lives. It's a Friday afternoon. They're looking forward to their after work or something along those lines, right? Everything is super nice. They're bantering. And then they meet this older fish, right? And as she passes... She nods at them and exchanges one of those American niceties. So probably American fish, right? Well, how's the water, she says. And the young fish, they become deathly quiet. There is a tension convention brewing. And they're waiting as she moves further and further away from them, out of hearing range. And then they burst out laughing. Water? What is this antiquated construct? What is this archaic notion that this senile old fish is talking about? What was she mentioning? She was talking about water? Nobody talks about water anymore. What, what is that? I remember my grandma, grandpa talking about it, but I mean, nobody talks about it anymore. And then they continue on their way. For me, this is the story of digital. This is the story of a technology that has moved to the shadows of what we commonly talk about, right? It has become invisible. We no longer reflect on us interacting with these handheld devices, etc. We merely see it as a way of doing business or conducting our lives or being social with our friends, etc., etc. So the technology itself has become invisible. And this is something that previous research has addressed, right? The, the, the whole idea about ubiquitous computing. And if you look at, listen to the boards of Mark Weiser, it's, it's first when a technology becomes invisible that it actually has an impact, right? So what happens when a technology the digital technology becomes invisible when it just becomes the way that we do our everyday jobs or do our everyday uh, interactions. Right? What happens when it becomes invisible? Then a lot of new questions pop up. Well, how do we control it? How do we organize it? How do we measure it? As researchers, well, the question obviously is how do we study it? How do you study something that is not demarcated from the rest of reality? How do you study something that you cannot put into a laboratory, put into a box, when something becomes pervasive? That is core to the issue related to digitalization. It has become this pervasive factor. The digital has become pervasive. And that creates a lot of difficulties for us. Because the old models that we had for, for controlling this technology, they were built on the notion that IT was something that happened in the basement of an organization, right? It was something conducted by weird guys, always men in white coats, uh, sitting coding, uh, long fingernails, stripy long hair, drinking jolt cola, 
in the basement of the organization. You met IT when you came to work. Then you met these large scale, grand scale IT systems like SAP or whatever. But now it has seeped into our reality. It has seeped into becoming pervasive for us. And that creates or that makes all the difference to how this technology functions. It becomes invisible and then it starts to have a huge impact. So that is my personal entry point into the study of digitalization and into working with digitalization, trying to understand this in a better manner. And that is something that I hope we will all be able to do throughout this summer course. The problem here is that organizations today find themselves in dire straits. We don't really know how to manage this. We don't really know how to control this. We don't really know what happens when digital disruption comes in from the side. How do we need to change our organizations? How do we need to digitally transform? How do we meet this both at the organizational level, at the individual level, and on the societal level? So how should we do this is the prevailing question. And there are very few answers, right? So when we look at this, I, I, I start to think about the, the, or the way that organizations approach this. I start to think about what Borges describes as the Dofus bird. Right? So the Dofus bird is a bird, a very rare bird, and it only exists in one geographical place in the world, right? And that is a very high pointy mountain where it has taken up its territory by circulating the top. But apart from, well, it, 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 compared to all other birds, it flies backwards because it is afraid of what it might see if it would fly forward, right? That's the Dofus bird. So are we, are our organizations, is our society behaving a little bit like the Dofus bird right now, right? Are we trying to back our way into the future to avoid the terror and the fright of looking this straight in the face, right? When we look, at uh, the different reports that come out trying to establish, well, what's the need for this competence? What's the need for competence related to the digitalization of society? We find that, well, there is a massive dearth uh, brewing in terms of people that actually know how to do digitalization, right? So Almega and Konkurrenzverket, etc., they all point to the same thing, even on the EU level. There is a lack of 250,000 um, uh, uh, IT, IT workers or digital workers. So there's a dearth of digital competence. But digital competence is so much more complex than just being able to code. Right? So what Konkurrenzverket finds is that, well, the primary um, factor holding us back right now are individuals in our organizations and their ability to think about digitalization. It is not the cutting edge insight into coding that is needed on the, on the societal level. Not only. We also need individuals that can, well, elaborate on and think about, understand the consequences of digitalization, of the digitalization of society. And that's where this course comes in. This course is going to be a vestige for this intellectual discussion about the digitalization of society. And we'll address that by looking at the current research, the research that we are currently doing to understand this better. And then we need to be very careful when we think about this. So if we read Rebecca Solnit, for instance, on the art of a field guide to getting lost, all great exploration starts with some sort of getting lost, right? So there are no clear answers here. That's the first thing we have to uh, agree on. We cannot provide you with a, uh, with a checklist for how you do digital transformation in your organizations, etc., etc. That's not the way this works. This is a very complex phenomena. This is modeled 
it is too grand for us to be able to break it down into smaller parts and then in a mechanistic fashion basically just provide you with the answers. So what we try to describe here or what we try to create with this course is a set setting where we will see each session, each lecture, each reading as a departure, not an arrival. It's not the answers that are important. It is the questions that we state, right? And what we have here with all of these top-notch researchers giving you the absolute latest from their field is a polyphonic message of hope. It is a lot of voices, sometimes even counteracting one another, talking about different nuances, different approaches, different perspectives to this grand scale phenomena of the digitalization of society. And our hope is that this is something that will benefit you immensely. When we talk about an education at the university level, I like to return to the ideas of Oscar Wilde and his correspondence on the Oxford temper. He describes that as the ability to play gracefully with ideas. And that is what I hope will be both the means and the ends of this education and this uh, uh, summer course. Can we play gracefully with these ideas? You'll get access to a lot of ideas. Some of them, as I noted previously, will be counteractive, will be counterintuitive. Some of them might even counteract one another, etc., etc. But the whole idea here is to be able to play gracefully with them. And we might even think about this from the perspective of Sedalian and, and Orion, right? You know, this ancient quote or it is this ancient idea about, well, who sees the furthest, the giant or the midget on top of the giant's shoulders? So what we're going to do here is to get the voices of some of these midgets sitting on the shoulders of the giants, right? And they might see further. They might see in a new direction to what you thought of initially, but it will create this polyphonic uh, voice. It will create this, 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 uh, uh, this chorus of ideas. Sometimes it's a bit off, but all in all, it will hopefully give you the ability to see further. That said, I want to note that, well, when we think about a university education, and when we think about a university course such as this one, we're trying to design it in a manner that will provide the optimal experience for you in terms of learning. So we want the focus to be on learning. We don't want the focus to be on grading. So, so for this course, we've gotten rid of the notion of a high pass or a pass with distinction to solely have a pass and a fail distinction, right? The whole idea about this is to avoid getting into pitfalls where we need to, where, where, where you guys will have to, a focus on the grade that you're getting. We want you to focus on the learning, right? utilize the discussions that we'll have as a way to propel your insight and to propel your knowledge and to propel your value on the job market, your value in the digitalization of society. So let's get down to some practicalities. I right? guess that's basically why you wanted to listen to this introductory lecture. Right? So the whole course is designed as a set of modules so we have six modules, and in each module, we've got certain sessions. They are four or five per module. And at a specific date, so today, the first module is going to open up, making the lectures, video recorded lectures, the readings made available through the site, and the quiz related to the reading available to you. Right? What you do then during these two weeks is that you listen in on the lectures one, two, three times, I don't know. Then you do the reading and you do the quiz. Once you've completed all the quizzes and we've reached the date of the next module, then that module will open up. Right? In parallel with reading and um, 
and doing your uh, listening in on the lectures, we have forums for you to discuss. There are forums for each and every lecture, and there are uh, there is a general forum where you can start to combine the ideas from the different lectures. So each module is two weeks, and they will open up after you've completed all the quizzes, right? And we've reached the date. So this is the way that we've tried to design a progression throughout this course. That means two weeks to listen in on four to five lectures and do four to five readings and do four to five quizzes and have a discussion. That is the overarching idea. Towards the end, we've got two weeks where, we'll be, where we, we will be trimming. We might feel the need to address certain issues that were not addressed in the original lectures. Maybe you feel that you need something else. That is our ability to, to provide that to you. Maybe you've lost out on some of the discussions. Maybe you need to complement that. That is ample time for, for doing that during the two last weeks. The, there are two grading aspects of this course. The first one is the quiz. So, so we've designed or we've selected readings for you that uh, will function in two ways. The first way is to be act as a sounding board for the paper uh, for, for the uh, for the uh, lectures right so if you've read the papers then you will have a better understanding of what is being presented during the lectures and so it will give you nuance because when we do lectures and they're very short lectures compared to what we're used to then we need to simplify things but in the associated literature they can be further developed these ideas right so it provides the sounding board. It also provides kindling. So this is fuel for getting fire into the discussions. And in the discussions, we want you to use the references. We want you to use the literature, maybe tip each other in terms of what they should read, what the other guys should read. But we also have this function of it being a way for us to check if you've read the papers. All the questions are multiple choice, and you can take the, uh, uh, the the quizzes five times. So if you fail the first time, it doesn't really matter. You can do try again, try again, and it's related to re readings. And once you've finished all the quizzes and the date for the next module has come, then the new module will open up, giving you access to five more or four more lectures. Right, so. Think about the quizzes as a way to, to, to check if you've actually read the papers. And think about what Sora Liedman says about reading. It is about bathing the soul. So uh, if you have a hard time motivating yourself, think about it as bathing the soul. Then we also have discussions. So the idea behind the discussions is, well, it is an assessment, right? You have to do a certain amount of posts in order to get a pass on this course, but it is also highly focused on learning because we believe that you learn by trying out these ideas, by testing them against your peers, right? So you explore these issues together with your classmates and you help one another to reach a higher level of insight than you could on your own. Right? You might want to identify links between different lectures and readings. You might want to give examples of additional readings and interpretations. You are a very diverse group of students or participants. Some of you might have ample experience from industry, something to fuel into the discussion. Maybe you've seen this phenomena. Maybe you've tried it. Maybe it didn't work or maybe it did work. Some of you are, are students without that experience from industry, but you've read a lot. Right? Maybe you know that this links into something else that could be possible to read. Right? That's the way we work together in the discussion. So think of it as a safe space to try out new ideas. Be creative here, but remember to play gracefully. Right? The Oxford Temper in Gothenburg. So with that, I would like to say once again that I'm super stoked to have you on board. I'm super happy that you've decided to apply for and that you've been accepted to the course. And I truly look forward to sharing this experience with you. It is going to be a wonderful ride. 
you are going to learn a bunch of things. We are going to learn a bunch of things and we are going to help to solve the issue of the digitalization of society. We will do that together. Once again, welcome to the course.